What we'd like to do in this mini lecture is make a list and discuss you know, five of the major principles of Marxism, that influentialism that inspired revolutions in places like Russia and China, and uh, this would then be the radical left form of socialism, the revolutionary form of socialism. So here's number one. That's the opening line in the quote from the Communist Manifesto that I posted on D2L. The history of all hitherto existing societies is the history of class struggle. That's the driving force behind history. That's what causes all the fundamental change in a society. And so what Marx is arguing is that uh, there isn't some outside D theistic force or theistic force that's uh, driving history on towards some kind of a culmination. Instead, the meaning of history can be found within history itself. And what causes change is struggle between classes, which then, once that struggle is resolved, a new form of society is created, and uh, that new synthesis then becomes the new thesis and then the process begins all over again until we reach the fifth and final stage which we've learned about ruled by the ideal class so that's principle number one here's number two Marx was an atheist. There is no God. So, in the Judeo Christian tradition, uh, we are taught that God created human beings in his image. Marx would say just the opposite there is no such thing as God. God is uh, created by humans, some forms or other of God is created by humans, and it's usually done by elites uh, trying to control society like uh, the pharaohs in Egypt and the elaborate religious foundations of their government which uh, required massive amounts of uh, resources to be contributed to the building of a pyramid in which only one or maybe a few people would be buried. And yet, uh, so much of the resources of their society went toward the building of that pyramid. And so it is in the modern world, Marx would say. Religion, organized religion, uh, has been created by elites and designed to keep the people under control. So, for example, in France, prior to the French Revolution, you had the monarchy, and the official church, and they work together, and uh, they work to control the people. So, Marxism in any of its purest forms is atheistic, there is no God. Here's number three. So Marxism being the revolutionary form of socialism uh, claims to be scientific. And you notice I put that word in quotation marks. Marx had uh, nothing but disdain for other forms of socialism. So there were, for example, socialists who believed that what people should do is get together uh, and live in a communal state, uh, kind of like Hutterites or the Amish people 
or Mennonites uh, to a lesser extent, and then form a model community that the rest of the world could observe. And uh, there, were, there were socialists who believed that you, could, you should just form a political party and uh, eventually you would be voted into power. And Marx said all those forms of socialism are in error and uh, what makes my form, Marxism, different is that it's based on research and it's scientific. And if you can get people in the middle of the 19th century to believe that your ideas were scientific, uh, then you were sort of borrowing the prestige that had been established by people like Charles Darwin and uh, you know the scientific revolution and its respect for science and experimentation as being perhaps the only form of truth. So that's the third basic Marxist principle. Um, Marxism is scientific. What he's suggesting is not a prediction of what might happen, but rather it's an inevitability. Okay, here's number four. Marxism has an international appeal. So at the end of the Communist Manifesto, and these are some of the most famous lines written in the history of the world, and, you know, especially in the history of the West, working men of all countries unite. You have nothing to lose but your chains. So here's what Marx argues. In every industrialized society, you have a working class, men and women. So all political boundaries are actually artificial. Your true brothers and sisters are the working class people in whatever country exists. And so you need to consider them to be your actual kin. And the end result of this is uh, basically this notion. workers' ultimate allegiance. So especially as we spill over into the 20th century, uh, what socialists and Marxists believed was that uh, if a nation declared war, what working class people should refuse to do is go to war. They should not comply. Because if they agree to go to war, what they'll do is they'll end up going to war against the working class people of another country. You're not going to see any of the political leaders or the really wealthy people out there fighting in the trenches, it's going to be working class people. There's a great scene in All Quiet on the Western Front where a German soldier ends up in a shell hole with a French soldier and uh, in the struggle he has to kill the French soldier and when he takes out the guy's billfold he sees that this guy has a wife and kids, he's just like he is, and why are they killing each other? Because their countries, their leaders told them to do so. So instead of that, what uh, socialists and then Marxists argued was a worker's ultimate allegiance is to his or her class, not country. So that's how wars could be avoided. All political boundaries were artificial. Marxism had an international appeal to working class people all around the world. Here's number five.
Other forms of socialism would suggest by forming political parties and electing people, you can achieve socialist goals through the ballot box or get together and live in a communal setting and provide an example for the rest of the world. And Marx had nothing but disdain for all of that. And instead, what he argued was the only way that true Marxist goals can be achieved, the only way that you're going to have rule by the ideal class and the ideal society is to have a revolution. And any form of socialism that uh, says it can be done in another way is not a legitimate form of socialism. His was the only way. And so if you disagree, you could not really be considered a Marxist as far as Marx was concerned. So these are five of the major principles that we find in the ideology known as Marxism.